We looked at the PKPD of vancomycin. Now the next learning objective is determine a vancomycin loading dose for critically ill patients with serious MRSA infections. What is steady state? Steady state is the point at which the rate of drug administration is equal to the rate of drug elimination and the concentration of drug is constant. Now, steady state is based on the drug's half-life and it occurs after approximately four to five half-lives. Steady state is the most optimal time for obtaining vancomycin levels. So if you're gonna target trough, it's best to get it during steady state. Otherwise, you end up overdosing vancomycin because if you get the trough during this time, it's going to be subtherapeutic. On the other hand, before reaching steady state, there will be subtherapeutic levels of vancomycin. So we don't really want to uh, decide our maintenance dose based on levels in, uh, in the period of time before steady state because if you decide the maintenance dose here, once the drug gets to steady state, you're going to be overdosing vancomycin. So you want to get the levels during steady state. On the other hand, uh, this raises an issue that before we get to steady state, we will actually be underdosing vancomycin. So one way to battle this is to actually give a loading dose. So the red graph shows you what happens without the loading dose. So it takes some time for the levels to rise up to steady state, which means that during the initial period, there will be subtherapeutic levels of the drug. By giving a loading dose, you quickly achieve a high dose. It will eliminate any subtherapeutic period of time, and then it will help you to get to that steady state state faster without affecting the maintenance dose. So here's what the guidelines recommend for a loading dose. So it's only recommended in seriously ill patients. So patients with uh, uh, sepsis, meningitis, bacteremia, infective endocarditis, pneumonia, and osteomyelitis. Uh, and of course, the, only these infections if they're suspected to be due to MRSA infection. So if other organisms are causing this, uh, these recommendations do not apply. But if MRSA is suspected in these infections, then a loading dose of 25 to 30 milligram per kilogram is recommended based on the total body weight uh, dose. Now, because the loading dose are larger doses than uh, the maintenance dose, it has the potential of causing reactions. So typically histamine uh, reactions, uh, so if that happens, we can use antihistamines in patients. We can also infuse, uh, in increase the infusion time. So if you infuse it over two hours, and I'll explain that more on the next slide. Loading doses are also helpful in patients who have uh, creatine clans less than 60 because the half-life is uh, longer in these patients so it actually takes longer for these patients to get steady state so if someone has renal dysfunction it will actually take a very long time for them to get to steady state because steady state typically is uh, four to five times the half-life so if the half-life is longer in these patients it takes even very longer to get to a steady state. So these patients will also benefit from a loading dose. So the first part is recommending loading dose for, uh, for serious infections. This part is recommending for any infections in uh, renal dysfunction. And they're saying do not exceed a single loading dose of 3,000 milligram or three gram because of those histamine uh, related uh, reactions. And the most common infusion related in, uh, reaction is uh, Redman syndrome. So Redman syndrome is a histamine mediated hypersensitivity. As you can see in this picture, it uh, actually causes flushing, erythematous rash. It causes some pruritus um, and sometimes mild to uh, profound hypotension, including uh, even cardiac arrest, which is not as common. And this can be avoided if you slow the infusion rate. Typically, if you reduce it to about 15 milligram per, per minute. And there are also standardized recommendations. So if you're, um, you know, you don't want to infuse anything less than one hour. So the infusion time for vancomycin should be at least one hour. And then the higher the dose, you can actually prolong it. So for anything, uh, you know, if it's 500 milligram or a uh, a thousand milligram you typically infuse over one hour so a 500 milligram over one hour it's about 8.3 milligram per minute and then 1000 milligram infused over one hour is about 16.6 .6 milligram per minute which is uh, almost uh, you know around um, you know 15 milligram per minute it's not too much higher than uh, 15 milligram so if somebody, so most people will tolerate 1000 milligram over one hour. If they start to have reaction, what we can do is to increase the infusion time to, to 90 minutes uh, and potentially two hours. 
And then with 1250 milligram, it's recommended to do a 90 minute uh, infusion. The same with 1500 milligram. So again, 1250 over 1.5 hour translates into 13.8 milligram per minute. And 1500 milligram over 1.5 hour is about 16.6 uh, milligram per minute. 1750 milligram is recommended to be infused over two hours, which is about 14.6 milligram per minute. And two grams are recommended to be infused over two, two hours, which is about 16.6 milligram per minute. Of course, you can infuse any of these uh, even longer if the patient was not tolerating it. So for example, I have done uh, one milligram, uh, uh, 1000 milligram over three hours in patients before, just because they weren't um, tolerating it. And of course, you can also administer diphenhydramine uh, to these patients to, uh, to reduce the amount of this reaction. Uh, most patients, however, will not experience it. So most patients actually tolerate vancomycin very well.